Hello everyone, what's up and welcome to a brand new series called Hello AWS. This series is going to be focused on AWS and how to use their services in Mendix apps. If you don't know, Mendix and AWS have been partners for a long time. Since 2016, Mendix Cloud and PreCloud have both been hosted on AWS. But recently, both companies have stepped up this partnership to focus on the developer experience. We both have the combined goal of making Mendix the fastest and easiest way to build apps on AWS. We've been hard at work creating a bunch of connectors to make AWS easier to use in a low-code way. You can already find them in the marketplace today, so why not try some of them out? Well, if you want to use any of these awesome new connectors, you're first going to have to authenticate your Mendix app with AWS using the AWS authentication module. So that's what we're going to have a look at in this video. So to start setting this app, we're going to go to Mendix Studio Pro and we're going to click the shopping cart icon to open the marketplace panel. Then I'm going to search for the authentication module and I'm going to open that up and download it into my project. We're going to choose to add as a new module and click import and then click continue. As you can see under the overview here on the marketplace page, this module supports two methods of authentication. First up, they have static credentials, which is based on AWS access keys and secret access keys. Now, this method may be what most developers are familiar with, but it's actually less secure. If someone gets access to those credentials, your app is exposed. The preferred method here is session-based credentials. Session credentials work using short-lived tokens, which are only valid for a short period of time. It works by establishing trust beforehand using the AWS Roles Anywhere feature. Once trust has been established, you can obtain your short-lived session credentials and use those to generate your SIGV4 headers, which are required for AWS services. So what are SIGV4 headers? Signature version 4 is AWS's signing protocol, which is required to authorize REST API requests for their services. In other words, there are special headers you need to add to your REST request in order to securely connect with AWS. Don't worry though, most of our modules handle this for you and you'll only need to think about your SIGV4 headers when creating your own integrations. So for this next part, we're gonna log into the AWS console. Once you're logged in, you're gonna search for roles anywhere. So this is a quick three-step process in order to establish trust with your request. The first thing we need to do is to create a trust anchor. So we're gonna click Creates a trust anchor. We're going to firstly make sure that your region is correct. It needs to be the nearest region closest to you. This is to reduce latency. Then we're going to give it a trust anchor name. So hello AWS. And I'm going to opt for an external certificate bundle. So now I have a private CA open here in Visual Studio. So you are going to take from our private ca.pem file, we're going to copy the certificate here and we're going to paste it in here. Then we're going to say create a trust anchor. I'm not going to actually cover how to make a certificate authority in this video because it takes quite a few steps. But if you're interested on in how to do this, you can head over to the new developer blog where my colleague Joe Robertson has written a complete guide on exactly how to do this. So step two of this process is to create a new I am role. So we're going to do that now. We're going to click create a new role. And we want to create a custom trust policy. And then you have to paste in this specific JSON. You're going to overwrite what is there and um, make sure there is no leading white space it will fail and we can click next next up you need to select the policies now the policies are relating to the aws services you want to use in my case i am going to do recognition in my next video so i'm going to add the policies for recognition here i'm just going to add all of them but in a real life scenario, you only want to add the ones you explicitly need. And uh, I'd suggest you find out which ones you need. 
we have to give it a name. Call this AWS video. And it has permissions and we can click create role. Final step in the AWS console is to create a profile using the role we just created. So I'm going to step back to the roles anywhere page and I am going to create a profile. So give this a profile name. So AWS video, we're going to search for the role we just created. You can then choose recognition again and create a profile. Now it's time to go to Studio Pro and configure the module there. So I'm going to open it up. On my home page, I have a container here that is taking me to a page. And here in this data source microflow, I call uh, the get credentials method. So we're going to right click here and insert an activity. And we want to get credentials. So we want to get session credentials, and then we need to provide some details to the uh, action. So first up, we need to give it a region. So your region comes from AWS. It is this one up here. Mine is EU West 2. Yours will be more specific to whichever area you chose. So EU West 2. Then we need our role on, and this we can get directly from AWS's console. So we can go to roles. We're gonna look for the role we created. And we're gonna copy the on from over here. It's a string, so it needs to be in quotes and paste it in. Then we're going to do the same for the profile and the trust anchor. So we're going to go back to AWS and we're going to go back and we're going to look for the profile we created. Copy the iron again. And the trust anchor as well. This one. We're going to copy the R again and paste it in here. So there's a few more properties down here, so don't forget about them. Um, so we need to select a client certificate ID. And for the moment, I'm just going to put in one. And then we need to enter a duration. This is going to be 900 as the default suggests. It's about 15 minutes that the token's valid for. And the session name can be anything you want. I'm going to put this as hello AWS. So what is this client certificate ID? Well, this is the certificate that we uploaded into AWS's console. So we need to make sure that Mendix also has the same certificate, although it requires it in a different format. AWS requires the .pem file and Mendix requires the .pfx file. So it's the same credential, but just in a different format. So how do we import that into Mendix? Well, we need to set a custom configuration. So to do that, we go to settings and we're gonna open the active configuration. You might have multiple here. Um, and we're gonna go to custom. So client certificate password, we need to make sure it's set. And this is the password that you created the certificate using. You have to enter this when you create it. So if you don't create it yourself, ask the person you did and ask them for the password. Mine's simple, I created it myself. And then the client certificate, um, this is the actual file path to the certificate. Now it doesn't have to be in your project directory. It can actually just be on your desktop or anywhere on your machine. And um, mine is over here on my desktop. So we're gonna put that in and then uh, another backslash. And the file we want is the client.pfx. So we're just going to append that to our screen. Okay. 
and we need to set this as the return value. Now, if we run our app and go to that page, we should be able to see our temporary credentials. Okay, so my app is running. I can go to my browser and to my Mendix app. So I'm just going to sign in using the demo switcher and I'm going to go to the authentication connector and there we go. You can see our REST request has triggered in that data source microflow and it's returned our credentials to us. Um, it's safe to show you guys these because these are going to be invalidated in about 15 minutes. So using these credentials, we can then call the get cp4 headers action. Um, however, you don't really need to worry about that if you're using a connector from the marketplace like recognition, because that module already takes care of it. You'll only need to worry about cp4 headers when you're creating your own custom integrations with AWS. Okay, that's all for this video. In the next one, I'm going to be showing you how to use these same credentials to call recognition where I'm going to be building an app which has a twist on comparing faces. Remember, if you get stuck at any point, make sure to check out the documentation on both Mendix and AWS's doc pages. I also highly recommend taking the Mendix workshop on AWS, which I will link in the description. That's all for now. Until next time, I'm Ryan Mockey, and this is Hello AWS.